at Cloud Next 24 with Bala and Shambhu, and we're going to talk to them about generative AI development best practices with Cloud SQL for PostgreSQL. Thank you both so much for being here with us. Uh, before we get into it, can you give a brief introduction of yourselves, what you do at Google, and give us a little bit of a synopsis of your talk? Hi, Debbie. Nice to be here. Thanks for having us. My name is Bala Narasimhan. I'm a group product manager for Cloud SQL. Among other things, I'm responsible for the product strategy and roadmap for Cloud SQL for Postgres. Yeah, sure. I'm Shambhu Hegde, product manager for Cloud SQL. Among many things, I focus on making Cloud SQL the best place to build Gen AI application for uh, developers. And thanks for having me here. Yeah, so yesterday we were uh, presenting our session and the focus of our presentation was uh, best practices for generative AI applications when you're using Cloud SQL for Postgres as a vector database. We think that uh, everyone today is a Gen AI developer, right? Every developer is a Gen AI developer, right? We're in the era of democratization of Gen AI. And we think that Cloud SQL for Postgres is a really nice building block for that. So we were talking about how to do that easily while implementing best practices. Amazing. So can you tell me then why is Cloud SQL for Postgres SQL particularly well suited for building generative AI applications? Like what are the advantages? Yeah, so Cloud SQL for Postgres is a managed database service for open source Postgres. And, and as you know, uh, Postgres is a very popular open source database. Uh, there's many reasons for that. There's a really strong community that's innovating around Postgres, and when you adopt Postgres, you're able to uh, uh, adopt essentially an open source database. You're not getting locked into a proprietary database, right? On top of that, it's really easy to convert Postgres into a database for Gen AI applications. All you need to do is execute one command. Uh, you install an extension called PG Vector, and you're off and running. Wow, what, a, what an easy way to get started, one command. Yeah. Great. So in terms of using Cloud SQL as a vector database instead of maybe some other specialized vector database, why would we want to do that with Cloud SQL? Yeah, so when you're building a generative AI application and you're choosing a vector database, you have two, you have two options there. You can, build, you can use a vector database that's built from the ground up that does one thing and is a vector database. Or you can use a general purpose database like Cloud SQL for Postgres, convert it into a vector database, like I said, with just one command, and use that. And we think that's the right way to go. And that's because uh, you know there's many benefits to converting an operational database to a vector database. Firstly, all your data is in there already. So if you had to choose a specialized vector database, you now need to move your data from one data store to another. And as you know, moving data is really hard and error prone. Uh, but the most important thing really is that when you're using Cloud SQL for Postgres, you're getting all the enterprise features with it. You're getting availability out of the box, you're getting data protection out of the box. But most importantly, all the security and governance requirements around data is taken care of because you're just you're using Cloud SQL for Postgres and Cloud SQL is ready for that. And in contrast, if you're going to use a specialized database, you need to make sure it checks all those boxes. So Cloud SQL can be a vector database, right? You don't need to go specialized, that's wonderful. So if I'm a user and I want to get started, how can I do that? Yeah, sure. So because of Gen AI, there are so many new possibilities and everyone is thinking of building Gen AI application. So when someone builds a Gen AI application, time to market is very important. You don't want to spend several months or years building a solution. You want to ship something fast and then iterate on that. So that's why uh, we have published the Jumpstart solution uh, built using GKE, Cloud SQL for PostgreSQL and Vertex AI. Using this Jumpstart solution, anyone can build a Gen AI application in less than 30 minutes. So even if someone doesn't have AI ML expertise, it is possible to build Gen AI application in less than 30 minutes using this Jumpstart solution. So we have published this Jumpstart solution in uh, uh, GitHub. It contains all the codes and templates, Terraform templates, etc. Within few clicks, someone can actually get started. And they can get started right today. So uh, we are providing the link in the description so someone can get started with this. So what this Jumpstart solution exactly does is, you know, it gives the data for you, it you know, uh, creates the vector embeddings, then it also creates a Gen AI powered chatbot that can actually interact with users and help them find the right products. So I really encourage everyone to give it a try and start building Gen AI application from today itself. Amazing, yes. I love Jumpstart solutions. We've recently been deploying a lot of them and there's such an easy way, as you said, it really lowers the barrier to entry and it gives you kind of that boilerplate of how can I get started quickly and then you can edit from there as you need to for your business. Yep. That's wonderful. So 
you've deployed this Jumpstart solution. What are some best practices to keep in mind? What is it important for people to follow so that they're successful? Yeah. So from application development perspective, when someone deploys a Gen AI application in production, the observability becomes very important. Right? So you have to make sure that the performance is good, query performance is good, everything is working expected, etc. So that is why Cloud SQL for PostgreSQL has provided Gen AI specific observability. So that it is easy for anyone to see what's happening in the database, what's happening in the application, and then they can optimize based on that. Uh, Cloud SQL obviously provides all the system metrics, whether it is CPU utilization, disk utilization, etc. But apart from that, specifically for Gen AI, when you are doing a similarity search based on vector embeddings, you really want to make sure that the performance is good. So because of that, Cloud SQL provides a data cache, which helps in speeding up those queries. But how do you know whether data cache is being used efficiently or not? So that's why like, Cloud SQL offers different metrics, like how much you know, data cache is used, what is the hit count, miss count, all these metrics are available for customers along with the product itself. So it's very easy to observe what is happening. So it's not just about metrics. You also want to dive deep into the query specific itself, right? Like what is the query doing? Like is there any bottleneck, etc. So for that, Cloud SQL has something called as like query insight. So it is a, a tool inside the product itself. So you can go to Google Cloud Console and look at Query Insight for in-depth observability. Especially it provides you visual query plan. So for anyone, it is easy to see what is happening inside the database and uh, further optimize the uh, performance based on that. And as a next step, uh, they can also do end-to-end -end tracing from application to database when they use Cloud SQL because Cloud SQL supports such tracing abilities. So it is very easy for someone to get started and also do the observability in production. Yes, that's amazing. So essentially using Cloud SQL, having the metrics in there and the, service, the features in there that it has, you can follow those best practices and you'll be good. Wonderful. Thank you so much for being here with us today. I really appreciate it. Make sure to check out the links in the description to learn more about using Cloud SQL for PostgreSQL to build generative AI apps. And uh, have a great rest of your next. Yeah, thank, thank you, you. Debbie.